Hello friends, it's Sasha Trubescu again. I hope everybody's having a good day. If not, then your day is about to get a little bit better because you're about to get a little bit better at atomic chess. This video is going to focus on a very interesting opening that I recently started practicing called the Trojan Knight opening. And what I'm about to do is show you a couple example games from a tournament that I played in recently and I'm happy to say that I won first place. Um, it was sort of just an online atomic chess arena but I'm still very happy to have beaten well a, a lot of novices who had no idea what they were doing but also a few decent players. So let's take a look at this opening move knight h6. The reason it's called the Trojan knight attack or Trojan Knight opening is because when you play it, it sort of seems like a bad move, honestly. In in regular chess, this would be much worse than playing, say, Knight to F3, which is quite a decent opening move in regular chess. However, in atomic chess, the move Knight H3 is not bad at all, and is actually quite good. And it gives a few opportunities for more mobility which you're about to see in the next few games. Now this game that I'm about to show you lasted three moves and as you can see the opponent after I developed my knight developed his and what you can do just as you can with knight to f3 is in the case of an absolute novice you can play the exact same move knight g5 and win the game with knight takes f7 mate. So that was a really quick win there. But to be fair, they had no idea what they were doing. The next game was also very quick, but it gives me the chance to show you yet another idea for this opening, and it shows sort of a standard main line that you really should know if you're going to play knight to h3 in atomic chess. So I play knight h3, black responds with pawn to h6, which is a very standard move. What it's trying to accomplish is get rid of this square for the knight, and it does so successfully, preventing this instant checkmate. However, what we do is we play pawn to e3. This is a very common move in all kinds of atomic chess openings. Uh, whether it be knight to h3 or knight to f3 and then pawn e3. And the idea, of course, is to open up this bishop and this queen to, to come directly at the king. The response here was a really big blunder from black, but I can see this being some sort of opening trap because it seems like a logical move to try to trap the knight using these two pawns and deny yet another square to the knight here. However, it's a huge mistake and actually it loses the game instantly because with queen to h5, there's absolutely nothing that black can do. Uh, however, on a beginning level, this is very easy to overlook. And so always be aware that uh, if you're playing white, that queen to h5 might be a very good attacking opportunity. So the idea that I showed you in this particular game was just that you can always bring your queen out whether it be to h5 or g4 or f3 uh, especially f3 to try and force a lot of different checkmates on the king side. The next game here explores sort of a trap that is kind of a variation of what we just saw in the previous game and this was actually against a fairly highly rated player. He was actually much highly rated, much more highly rated than I was, but I managed to trick him with this very neat little trap here. Once again we see the standard moves which are knight h3, pawn h6, pawn e3, and here black played knight to f6 which is also very very common and tries to bring out the knight as sort of a kamikaze to try to attack the white king as fast as possible. 
What I played here was queen to f3, which is just overall a very strong move because it threatens all kinds of different opportunities on this square, uh, even if the square is blocked as it is in the case of this knight here. And the reason we can do it even though it's blocked is because of this move here. Um, after my opponent played uh, kind of an interesting move, d5, trying to once again deny central squares, um, what we do is we play knight to g5, and my opponent resigned after this. Uh, the reason he resigned is because after this sequence of moves, essentially here the trap is set. And if he plays something like this or some other throwaway move, we move the knight in and either knight takes with instant checkmate or pawn takes and then white wins. So no matter what, it is a lost cause for black. This game was another quick win using knight h3. As you can see, all of the past few games, um, and in fact the majority of my games when I played knight h3, have lasted 10 moves or less. And this is really shows the power of this opening to completely throw off people who are unfamiliar with it. You play knight h3, we see the standard response once again. Pawn h6, pawn e3. Pawn e3 is the essential move here in this case. This time my opponent played pawn to f6, with which I responded queen to g4. The reason this is a strong move is that rather than playing queen to h5 and immediately checking and then causing all sorts of complicated situations when this pawn goes up, it's much better to actually just play queen g4 and delay the sort of immediate check but instead what you do is you allow the opportunity of queen to g6 check. So what my opponent played here was um, a move to probably just give the king some space and also open up the bishop to try and mate. However, with king g6 check, the king has absolutely nowhere to go. And in fact, the game is lost for black. So once again, the main idea in this game is just to have that knight out, have it sitting there, but your main operator is actually the queen in this instance. And the queen just goes in and completely shreds the king side. And you can see the exact same thing in this game. Uh, this was sort of a mistake by my opponent. Um, once again, the standard response is this pawn to h6. But I still played the same sequence of moves, and this time, this knight, I just disposed of completely, and I played knight takes pawn on g5, just to clear out that side and give my queen a bunch of chances to strike at the king. Um, I believe this move was a mistake because I play this, that move is forced to prevent instant checkmate and then I win the game. Again, you see the queen completely taking over this side of the board and just sliding all over the place. And I've actually had that happen to me a few times where the queen just penetrates the position and you know is, is able to either win the game or inflict heavy losses. Um, this is one of the few games with this opening that actually lasted longer than a few moves and this was with a very experienced player and you see all these standard moves. I bring my queen out once again to queen f, uh, to the f3 square. And he tries to trade, but what I do is I try once again to set up this trap. He moves his king away. And I'm able to use this knight as just this kamikaze attack blowing up so much material in exchange for just one knight. So I'm essentially gaining a pawn, a bishop, and a queen. And my queen, meanwhile, is you know free to roam and try to strike at the king. 
In reality, this game was a lot longer than I expected, and if you care to look at the moves, you know, I, I, I sacrificed that queen for a bunch of pieces there, and then after several moves, I just had a strong material advantage. And there was this curious situation of the kings being interlocked, which I'll probably address in a future video. But in the end, the material advantage was just far too crushing, and black lost the game. So, once again, it's important to remember that the queen is the principal actor in this, but the knight can always come out and clear out the king's side and destroy all these different pieces as an essential player. So I hope you learned something from this Trojan Knight opening video. I will try to address this opening from Black's side in a future video, but for now, if you're playing as white, I would highly recommend the Knight H3 move. If you want to try something new or are just tired of playing Knight F3, this is very good and the power of the Queen and Knight uh, together are just almost unstoppable. Now as I continue to play Atomic Chess and continue to learn more and progress throughout this game, I will report my findings to you in future videos. So I hope that you will subscribe and continue watching this series. So together we can survive Atomic Chess. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.